What is up guys? We're going to be talking about cross-site request forgery. What is it? And we'll also see an example of cross-site request forgery or CSRF in action. A simple explanation of the concept is that we manipulate the user's browser to send a HTTP request that they weren't intending on making. Now, why do we specifically manipulate the user's browser? Why don't we just send the HTTP request ourselves? The idea is that the user is authenticated on the websites that they are accessing. So when the user's browser sends a HTTP request to a certain site or service, automatically included with that request will be session verification information, such as a cookie, for example. So we don't need to know that session information if we can manipulate the user's browser into automatically sending that for us with whichever HTTP request we manipulate the user's browser into making. That's a basic concept. Let's take a look at an example. This is a cross-site request forgery lab. The objective is to use a CRF attack to change the user's email address. So let's access the lab and take a look. So we have our lab on the right and we are proxying traffic through Burp Suite on the left. Let's start by visiting the My Account section and we're going to be greeted with a login box. Now we're given a username and password so we can log into the user account. And you might think, well, what's the point if we already know the username and password? To demonstrate the CSRF concept, we're going to have to play two roles here. So on the one hand, we're going to be pretending to be a vulnerable user. And on the other hand, we're going to pretend to be a penetration tester checking the security of the web app. So let's log in as our user. And we can see it's a very simple interface. We just have my account and we have our email address and the ability to change our email address. Now let's just pretend as a legitimate user, we want to change our email address. So we'll call it wiener at newemail.net. We'll update the email. We'll have a look at the subsequent HTTP request that's being made here. So we can see a post request to my account change email and included in that HTTP post request is a cookie. And we can see our session value here. This is what determines that the user is legitimate and authenticated. Now the user has access to that information. The browser is going to send that cookie information along with every HTTP request to the web app. But obviously we as the hacker have no idea what the session ID is. This is what protects the user, at least in general. So it's hopefully clear that we can't just send our own HTTP request to this endpoint because we don't have the session information. What we can do is try and trick the user's browser into sending this HTTP request, obviously with our own email param, basically hijacking the account. And that request is going to be treated as legitimate because the user's browser is automatically going to attach the session cookie. Question is, how do we manipulate the user's browser into sending a HTTP request? So the idea here is that we want the user to visit a site that's controlled by us. Because anytime the user visits one of our websites, we can cause the browser to execute a HTTP request using a HTML form. Let's just go over the HTML very quickly. So we have a form, we have method, which is post, which is what we need in this case in order to communicate with that endpoint. We then have the URL. Now this is incorrect at the moment. That's because it changes with the lab. So we're going to update this before we pretend our user is going to visit this site. But notice the end of the URL, which is most important here. So the endpoint is at my account change email. So as soon as the user's browser visits this page, it's going to think about making a post request to this endpoint. And we can also include information as part of this form. So we have input type equals hidden, name equals email. So remember, we have to submit an email param with a value to tell the server what we'd like to change the email address to. So we're going to change it to evil at hacker.net. 
Now, the thing we need to know about HTML forms is usually there's a submit button. So you might think, well, it's one thing to actually get our user to visit our site. And remember, they also have to be authenticated at the other site at the same time. So there's a little bit of a coincidence there for both of those things to be true. But we also need our user to click a submit button as well. So what are the chances that all three of those things are going to happen? Well, the good news or bad news in this case, if you're the user, is that it's possible to use JavaScript to auto submit a HTML form. So inside these script tags, we have some JavaScript. We're accessing the DOM with document. We are accessing all the forms as part of the document. And we are accessing the form at index zero. So this basically means the first form in the document. Well, this is a very straightforward document. We just have one form. Then we can call the dot submit method on that form. What's going to happen here is the user is going to visit our page or follow our link. And the browser is immediately going to submit a post request to the endpoint, my account change email, along with the new email value we want to change the user's account to. Now, in order to try this out, we need to get the latest URL for the lab. So keep in mind, this will normally be a static URL, but obviously this is an auto-generated string for this lab. So we're going to copy this URL and we're going to paste it in the action attribute, which basically says where the form data is going to be posted to. And we simply need to tag the change email on the end here, which is the endpoint that we are targeting. So we'll save this. We're now going to simulate the user visiting our site. Perhaps we've delivered this to them via a link somehow, which they've clicked. And we can simulate that by simply firing up this HTML document in Firefox. So let's open with Firefox, let's see what happens. Page loads, notice immediately that we see that the user's email has been changed to evil at hacker.net. We've essentially taken over the account with this cross-site request forgery attack. Now, if we take a quick look in Burp Suite, we can see the original legitimate request to change the email to wiener at newemail.net see the session cookie attached here. And further down, we see the illegitimate request. Same cookie, this time submitted unintentionally from the user's browser, which changes the email to evil at hacker.net. Now, in this particular case, we don't get a message telling us we have solved the lab. And the ironic thing here is because this is a deliberately vulnerable web app, it doesn't even know that it's been a victim of a cross-site request forgery attack. Can't actually tell the difference between a legitimate and an illegitimate request. So in order to actually solve this lab, you can follow this link to go to the exploit server and it wants us to paste in our HTML. And it's going to pretend that the user visits that HTML. It will then let us know if we have solved the lab with that HTML snippet. So we are just going to grab our HTML here along with our JavaScript and we're going to paste it into the body here and we see we have this option deliver exploit to victim so often in the real world this would be via some kind of link and as we've mentioned we'd ideally want the user to be logged in and have an active session on the site that we're attacking so there's potentially a fairly low probability of that the thing that makes this attack deadly is imagine you get this link into the hands of several million users via an email. Let's just say for argument's sake that a decent percentage clicked on those links. The chances that at least one or two of those users are going to have an active session on the site we're attacking starts to increase. So there's a law of large numbers at work here. If you were to attack a single victim, the chances of any given CSRF attack being successful are fairly low. If you attack a million victims, then your probability starts to look a bit more positive. So let's deliver exploit to victim. Let's see if the lab likes our HTML. We get the message, congratulations, you solved the lab. So that's really the basic version of cross-site request forgery. 
hopefully you understand at least on a conceptual level how this particular type of exploit works. Hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks very much for watching, guys.